coming up on the Louis Diaz podcast. I think it's the power of writing down and the power of getting clarity of like what you want. Hi, and welcome to the Louis Diaz podcast, the podcast where you'll meet some of the most fascinating and incredible people from all walks of life. And together, we're inviting you in to be our special guest as we take you through some of their amazing experiences, adventures, and journeys. So sit back, and I hope you enjoy this episode of the Louis Diaz podcast. Hey, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Louis Diaz podcast. Today, I have got one of my favorite people in the world that I've ever met before, Luciana Fisterol. Welcome to the Louis Diaz podcast. So good to have you here. Thank you so much, Louis. It's a pleasure for me to be here. You know, um, there's so much for us to talk about, but I think the first thing that we should discuss is how we know each other. Do you remember this story? Yes. Oh, if I remember this story, of course I remember this story. May I speak this story? Yeah, yeah, you tell it. Yeah, so at my side, there, because your story might be a little bit different from your perspective. Um, for me, I just moved to Melbourne and I got this apartment in St Kilda Beach. And then I see this dude going around St Kilda with a skateboard saying, free skate lessons. <laughs> free skate lessons and I always wanted to approach and do a free skate lesson until I did uh, and then I did the free skate lessons I started skating I got one uh, one long board for me I love it um, there was one funny day that we were skating together and like two for 20 seconds that um, you went do something else I just <laughs> fall apart and broke my nose and you helped me you bring back my home yeah, we just become friends uh, since my first free skate lessons. It was <laughs> such a cool episode in my life. Yeah, yeah, it was a cool episode in my life. And just to give people some context, yeah, back then I decided that I wanted to just give free skateboarding lessons for an entire summer just to people on my local beach where I was living. And yeah, you were one of those people. But you were definitely one of my most memorable students because, and I think this is one of your general attributes in life in general, is that you just have, a, like, you have a will. You have a really strong will and that you, when you get an idea of, about something or you fixate yourself on something, you just need to do it. You need to achieve it and you won't let anything hold you back. Would I be right in saying that? Yes, that's, um, I guess, I guess that's me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess it is you. Me, I, I, yeah, I changed my life so many times. And if I do look back, uh, that was it. I just made the decision and then just move forward until I achieve what I want. So, yes. Yeah, because you definitely weren't the most natural skateboarding student that I had. Um, you know, it took a couple of lessons and it was <laughs> really memorable because, honestly, you were pretty bad. You were, you were really bad. I know. <laughs> Um, I know, but I was there every day trying training. I bought a skateboard for myself, you know, because I wanted to do it. <laughs> against my advice, by the way, I told you not to go and buy one. I said, you need more lessons. Yeah. Um, but I think that's honestly one of the things that I, I have come, as I've known you over the years, it's one of the things that I've really come to love about you after realizing that, hang on, this woman doesn't just want to skate really bad. It's anything in life that she wants. She 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 goes about it in this way, like, um, and it just yeah, that really impresses me about you. Um, it's something that like I said, I really love about you. It's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to have you here because I think you're just so full of this energy. You give me energy, like your encouragement, that your love, your the way that you lead your life by example is just. Like I watch you and I admire you. I just feel like you're so full of courage. And yeah, like I said, I think I, I learned that from the moment that we met. So yeah. Yeah. And likewise, yeah. Likewise, I'm so proud of you right now. And then um, I think we just like look, should like fast forward because this first meeting between us was uh, actually about what? Six, maybe seven years six. ago now. Yeah. It was yeah. Six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's long time ago, and then we and I was traveling like crazy at that time, uh, but I wasn't with the life that I have now. I had like my my home base in Australia, and then I start really like traveling nonstop. And uh, I remember that you mentioned many times for me that you wanted to do an overseas trip. 
yeah. I really remember that. Like you, you would go to my to my home, you would chit chat, and you talk to me about like that you want to do some overseas trips, and then you reach me out. Look how the universe is so beautiful, and brings these that we call it coincidence. But for me, I really think that's universe putting like pieces together. Uh, so you reach me out when you were overseas. Um, that you start traveling, yeah. and then it was like, oh my God, let's go and, and, and chat, you know, about it all. And at that time, it was last year, yeah, last year. And then at that time, I was doing my, my coaching course, and then I asked you if you would be like my coachee, and you accept. And I, I felt so happy because, like, I had a connection with you, mm. and we could do like so much like good work together. So like that's how we connect. And since then. For me, it's like I see your evolution from the moment that we met a year ago and who you are right now and the person that you were building and the person that you are becoming that bring me so much joy, bliss to see and even impact me and inspire me even more, you know, for my own little challenges in life. So I thank you for like being my life and being inspiration for me, honestly. Yeah, thank you. No, I really appreciate that. It's hard to, it's sometimes it's hard for me to hear things like that because I don't know, maybe I'm modest or something. Maybe I don't like being the center of attention or I deflect a lot, but yeah, I just do what I do. You know, like there's things that I do really poorly in life um, and there's things that I do well. And I think at this stage of my life, I've learned, okay, try and do more of the things that you do well. <laughs> and keep improving on those and like you just work to that strategy <laughs> see what happens yeah uh, just before like we jump in this call i don't know if you like if it's okay for you so i was just looking at um some we did some together some like a uh, out scale statement about like your life and the career was really the point that we said that we would work on yeah and for me it's, uh, it's like why i find it important to mention this to you and here to your public too as in is the power of writing down and the power of getting clarity of like what you want. And if you allow me, I want to read for you what you told me at that time. What would you be your 10 to 10? When we ask you like, okay, like you are at that time, you, you said that you were a four, like you were feeling like from zero to 10, you were a four in your career. And then your 10 to 10, you said to me, I truly enjoy what I do. I love my work and the people that I surround with. I make great money, more than I ever imagined. It's on the path to that. I communicate with lots of people. I feel so satisfied. I'm using my creativity. I'm a leader in my field. I can do whatever and whenever I want. Like my work is flexible. Look what this podcast is bringing to your life, my friend. Yeah. Wow, it's so it's so cool to hear you read that out to me, you know, like and and like a year later as well. And so much can yes. happen in a year and when I wrote that down, the podcast was dead. It was buried. I yes. started it a little while ago, but I had no real, you know, desires to pick it back up at all. And um yeah, look at us now. I've got lights yeah, all but, around but, me but and microphones. See, but what, yes. But you see, one thing that's like you were great at too is like action taker. Like you always be such an action taker. Like in our sessions, we would do some exercises for you to move forward with week by week. And then you had at that time your idea of like writing, right? Like you were creating these articles and writing and you would write two or three per week and this and that. And, uh, and while you were doing it, you were discovering like what you like and what you don't like. And for me, this is also super important for people who want to transform their lives is to know that you need to take action. Maybe it's not the path that you think you're going to take, but it will show you, right? Like if you did not stop to go and write down and start to try to do some articles, like how would you know that like podcast is really what shines for you, right? I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I think, well, there's a lot that we can go into there and, you know, maybe we'll continue to discuss this and, and stay in and out of this thread as we continue our conversation. But sure. um, my listeners are international and I just want to, I want you to tell people where are you from and where are you at the moment? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. So I am originally from Brazil. 
Uh, at this moment, I am in Nepal, Kathmandu. So I am a digital nomad. So I'm always traveling every 30 days and I'm a different place. I'm in Kathmandu now. A week ago, I was in Oman. Two weeks ago, I was in Dubai. So I'm always moving around the globe. Yeah, so another 20 days, I will be in Nepal until Colombia. <laughs> wow. And I mean, when you say you're a digital nomad, you know, what does that mean? Yeah, what has that meant for you? And what are some of the pros and cons that you can tell me about? Because I just see the romantic, beautiful side of it. You make everything look so seamless. You make everything look so awesome and easy. And that's one of your gifts. And I'm like, hell no, hell no. What's going on behind the scenes? Yeah, and you see, I think it is easy. Like people complicate things. I used to complicate things. Well, for me, what is a digital nomad in the first place? Like, is your question? Um, so it's digital, you are working on the online and nomad because you are nomad. You are changing places every time. And people can disagree with me. People can have other ideas and perspectives. I know a few digital nomads that like have some other perspectives. But for me, it's really like not having a, a fixed residence. Um, and just move around. Like nowadays, I do not have a house, right? I do not have a place that I come back to. I have one bag, and then that's the bag that travels with me, and and that's and that's all I have. And when I say that's simple, it's because I have this dream, right? I had this dream. Like this was four years ago. I was working in Australia when I met you, and I have this fixed job. Yes, I was traveling, but I but it's just on holidays. I could not choose from where to work from. I could not choose the hours that I put in. At that time, I thought it was really hard to find a remote career. I really thought it was. So I was like, I need to find, I need to open a business. And I searched so many businesses. I, I went to like open marketing agencies, online agencies, social media agency. Um, I thought I would be selling products on Amazon. And look, that's what we were talking before. Like I jumped into it, right? Like I thought it was like, okay, selling products on Amazon. That's what I'm going to do. And then I opened a company in the United States. I went to the United States to learn how to buy products and sell products. And then the life just threw at me like a, a job opportunity for working in an Amazon agency, which I ended up losing three months later, which I think it's still amazing because what was that time when I gained a remote work that I was like, yes, I got it. I have location freedom. And then I lose it and I felt like my floor going down and I was like, fuck, I just lost what I just gained. Like, how can I do it? Was then that I realized I started applying to so much work and I realized that not a single profession, not a single career, not a single, you name it, that you cannot find online. And that's been my passion now to teach people on how to find those, you know, like where to look for. And more than that, it's like how to act upon it. Because like sometimes uh, there are people that look at, ah, oh, but it's just freelancer work. I would just gain a little money. But so where, that's where like the mistaking is coming from. Like, look, the company that I work for now pay me multiple six figures per year. I work 15 hours a day, but I start gaining $15 an hour. I grew, you know, my profession to that. So it's like, it's, uh, it's possible for me, it's possible for everyone. And it's been my passion to like, just show people that's really, really easy more easy than you think. Enjoying the episode so far? Be sure to follow us and leave us a review on whichever podcast platform you're listening on. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the episode. Mm. Um, so yeah, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, you did. And, and so, I mean, how long has it been now that you've been what you consider yourself a digital nomad? <sighs> Four and a half years. Yeah. I mean, does it wear you out? Because you just move so much. You're always on the move. I move so much. Yes, I move so much. And that's, a, that's actually a tricky question because honestly, the, I, the digital nomads that I know, even them come to me and say, oh my God, it's so tiring because they all normally travel and stay three months here, five months there. And I'm, I'm out like, for me, it's really hair when I do stay 30 days in a place. Sometimes I'd even book the 30 days. It's just like here. I said, I'm going to do 30 days in Kathmandu. Okay, it's the country Nepal. But tomorrow I'm traveling to another city because I'm already like, I need to see something new. Or like I know already my... So it's like, it's, it's people's style, really. I need to have this... I, I feel in my eyes, mm. honestly. I, I see my pupils like popping when I see like something <laughs> new. 
And I needed this adrenaline, I guess, cortisol, like coming to my body of like something new all the time. And plus, like I learned how like to live in my own company, right? I think this is very uh, much important for you to, you know, appreciate your own self, appreciate your own company and knowing that you don't really need like people obviously make a, a whole lot of difference, but you can be happy and find happiness with your own self, too. Mm. So yes, I love exploring, and for me, it's not exhausting at all. For me, it, for me, it gets exhausting if I stay in one place too long because mm. I need to see the world. I need to see something new all the time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I can. I mean, I can already tell that that kind of lifestyle definitely isn't for everyone. Um, yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's not. And I think, yeah, people might go online and they see people live in this kind of lifestyle, and they see that it's just the romantic side of it. Um, but I think it would take work and not everyone enjoys being with themselves. Like, I think I spend a lot of time alone. I, I enjoy it. I mean, one of the reasons why I love doing this podcast is because it gives me an opportunity to get deep with people. But sure, I can do that from anywhere, but I don't know. It's hard to explain. I like to, I get, I like to get to know an environment really well, you know, like the cracks of the place that I'm visiting. Um, yes and see the changes yes and yes and then again like every everyone is everyone right like that's the beauty of the world like mm. we are all unique and we all like enjoy and see things in a different way so yeah the way that i travel is people normally find it a rush but it's the way that i travel is the, the way that fulfills me right mm. like you have to find like something that fulfills you and more important for me is even like yes i decided to live the digital nomad life but Working remotely allows you to do like what you want in life. If you have a family, working remotely allows you to stay more with your kids. You know what I mean? So yeah. for me, it's more like the concept of working remotely, really, that I want to bring awareness to people. Like nowadays, I honestly, when I look back at my life and I see me losing one hour to go to work, have to get all pretty up, you know, you stay in a, in a chair from the night, nine to five was for me, it was never nine to five, it was always from eight to 10 in, in the night. I was always working 10, 12 hours, it was insane. But for what, you know, for what? Like my, my work colleagues would come from nine to five to stay three, four hours, chit chatting, drinking a coffee, not really focus on work. And then the reflection that I do to people is imagine that. You go to an office, you stay there for eight hours, but you are really just working like three, four hours focus. So imagine that you just take these three, four hours focus and do anywhere you want, mm. anytime you want, mm. you know, and then you have the other four or five hours to do something that you enjoy. Mm. Plus, like doing something that you enjoy will bring you much more focus while you are working, you know, like so the, the energy of like remote work. For me, it's like extremely important. It's not really the digital nomad. Yeah, it's a lifestyle that I choose. Uh, you don't need to choose that, but uh, just look at the remote work like world, you know, like mm. what uh, all the opportunities that it brings to you, like to enjoy more your life, enjoy more things that you, that you like to do. Yeah. And like I've been talking to, to a lot of people about this in my day to day life around remote work. And again, like to touch on that it's not for everyone, you know, some people yes. need a community in an office, they need to get out of their homes, you know, they, they need to get away from their families um, so they can have their own, find some sanity. And so, yeah, I, I definitely think that we live in a really great time in history where we've got more options than ever, right? We don't show up to the, the factory floor anymore and there's a thousand people on typewriters sending letters out, you know, those days are gone well and truly. And I love how, you know, that discovery for you came at some point but like, what point was it i mean how, how did your career start like what were you doing back in brazil wow my god this is like way way back <laughs> so in brazil i was events organizer so i was always organizing events and um like one thing that you find towards my story that our i always started uh, with an assistant position and i always grew to director management level position so in brazil it was the same i was young i was like start working in the events industry when i was 19 at age 24 i became the youngest events director for like the biggest media company south of brazil so that was really huge um 
uh, yes, I wor work with events was my background. I was, I was having a life, you know, that's by the paper, like everybody would say, that's like, it's perfect. I had my engagements, like my amazing fiance, hot, successful. I had this career, like the title, right? Like I have the title, the, the status of, gain, of going in any events that I want, in any VIP area, all the type of stuff. And I wasn't feeling happy. I wasn't feeling happy. I really want like this, this travel bug. I don't know from where it comes from, honestly. I really don't. I'm from a very small town. I'm from a town of 5,000 people. But I always have this, this travel bug and I wanted to travel. And then I just decide to look, I'm going to travel. So I, I, I broke up with my fiance. I quit my job, gave myself six months to figure out something. I didn't even have English at that time, right? It's like, pff, like I almost no English. Um, but whatever takes me out of Brazil, I, I was in. So I was looking to volunteer in India, do teaching English jobs in India, whatever that was like cheaper. When then a friend of a friend knew that I was like quitting and she was like, do you want to work in China for us? And I'm like, hell yeah. And then from Brazil, I went to China. I never ever imagined about China before, you know? And then in China was again, like I was hired as an assistant, right? I was like to hi hire just to be like the... The connection of someone in Brazil, um, really, the, it was the assistant supply chain that was the, the, the name of the position. And in one year, I become the legal Asia representative of the company. So I changed, um, again, like my career skyrocketed in China. Yes, and then I don't know, do I keep on? Then I get bored. <laughs> and then I get bored. I was like, again, super high paid position, gaining even more than Brazil. And then I was like, okay, but it's hard. It's hard to live as a China as like a single lady, you know, like every single lady that's like listening to this episode that ever lived in China. I'm not talking about Asia. I'm talking about China. <laughs> they will know that's hard for us. It's really hard for us because the foreigners want to stay with the Chinese ladies and uh, we cannot stay with the Chinese guy. And trust me, I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> it was so hard. So I've been to Australia before once, and then it was like, okay, I want to go back to Australia. And then in Australia again, I, I start from zero, right? I start from zero. I, I wanted to find a job. I applied for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs, positions. And then I got this job again in the events industry. So I start working for this uh, business coaching guy. And somehow, like, he does a lot of motivational events. And then somehow going and organizing the motivational events that um, he put on, uh, I got motivated to really try to open my own business and that's how the whole digital nomad style started. Wow, so long. I'm sorry, I gave too, too much information now. <laughs> no, no, that was great. It was great. Uh, I mean, one of the things that came to mind there was I couldn't imagine you with a Chinese partner. I mean, they... they... <laughs> I tried with a Singaporean once that he was taller at least, but it's like the culture is just too different. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, um, you know, especially a lot of Asian cultures, but especially Chinese culture feels so conservative to me. And you are the opposite of conservative. When I think of conservative, I don't think about you. Yes, no. I'm Brazilian. That's, that's a heavy in my blood. That's a heavy in my blood. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like I find your story really fascinating. And I'm, I'm curious because the word bored keeps coming up, like always getting bored. And like, is this a problem for you? Like... Right. Yeah, it's this is a great question because that's the question that I have been asking myself for the past year. Um, because I just I I start feeling like look, I'm writing a book right now, even like doing a memoir of like all that I passed through. And it's so funny because I was literally reading back my diary for four years ago and the fear that I was feeling four years ago when I was jumping from like a job in Australia. At that time, my salary was 154,000 Australian dollars. It's not a low salary for Australia. And I was get paid my Australian residency. So it was a very big jump for me to say, I wanna try open my business because I wanted to be a digital nomad. I was living a very high paid job for me being from a very small town of 5,000 people, it was already achieved the success, right? It was like, I achieve it. Like, why am I not happy? And then I was like, no, I want to travel the world my own terms. And I'm doing it now. And I gain more money now. And I have more freedom now. And I'm still 
wanting to do something more. And then I'm like, I'm bored on my work now again. And I reflect a lot. Why am I getting bored? Right. And for me, like I heard someone saying, and I found it so true that, um, and that's what I'm experiencing now is that if you are a high achiever, like to know that like really fulfillment will come when you help other people. That's how the fulfillment will come. So that's like the path that I am now. Like, so imagine I am gaining more money and, I'm, and I, I already quit this job. I already said like, look, I'm quitting. So I have like an arrangement with my company. In a few months I'm out. And in a few months I'm starting building all over again. But now with the sense of that's it, like wh whatever the path that I'm choosing now, which is like on the coaching, empowerment, uh, talking to people, make them have courage to have the leap, really helping people. I think this is my final aim as in professions, uh, because for me, it's bringing a lot of fulfillment to, to make an impact, right? To make an impact. And I really hope that like, I mean, come on, like I cannot, comp like I compare, sometimes we do compare ourselves, right? I would yeah. not say like, yeah. I look at these people, like their achievements, they become like trillionaires and they go all to the seven peaks in the world. And like the people that you bring to your podcast, right? They are just like mind blowing, yeah. mind blowing. And then I look at me and I'm like, who am I? But that's, that's where I'm like trying to break. No, look, like I also came from a small town. Like I built my, my you know, I can have I can, that thing of like, you look what, what you were like a few years ago and how to evolve and try to bring that person where you are at. Right. So like, that's what I'm trying to do. And, um, I really hope and, um, and, um, yes, I really believe that we'll bring the fulfillment and then the bored on we will stop because I'm doing something extra than myself. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I spoke to Hector Marcel, but I'm not sure that even that Hector or even myself would agree that once you attain <laughs> this next thing, that suddenly yes. these feelings will disappear. I think that's kind of something that I'm struggling with because I feel like in my own life, I see that pattern as well. Where I'm like, oh, if only I've got this. When I have this, I'll be like, oh, yeah, and it'll feel good. Um, you know what I mean? And yes. It's like, no, no. The good feeling needs, the, the this feeling of being satisfied with where I am needs to be here now. And that's it. Whatever else happens after that happens. But I can't be chasing that feeling of being satisfied anymore i can't it's like just stop and smell the roses you can't keep chasing this butterfly it's just too quick for you it's always going to be one step ahead of you that's how i feel about yeah that. yeah but you see yeah no but but you see it's like i i agree and disagree a little bit with you here so i agree with you that's like what we have is now and we have to enjoy now i do think that we do have to all have like something to look forward to Right, like having a goal, have a determination of something, mm. but knowing that is not. It, this is most important. Is not the. It's it's such a cliche, but it's so true. It's not the end destination. Is really the journey. Mm. It's really the journey. So it's like with you and your podcast, for example, right? Like I can see, and I give boost. Look, can you see my arm? I can see. It gives me boost gum. So this is real. Okay, I can see these. Like if you're doing constant, like constant, consistently this podcast with such amazing people the way you are, with the voice that you have, with the question that you ask, is not a single doubt in my head that is going to explode. Not a single doubt. Maybe you have this goal in, like for your head too, and nothing wrong with that, but enjoy every mm. single episode. Yeah, enjoy every single edition, which you are. So you see, it's the journey. And then when you get there, is that the mountain thing that they say, right? Like when you get to the top, you see another top. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with chasing another top. But for me, it's important. And in connecting what you say is enjoying the now. Mm. I'm doing like my career transition again. And I'm fucking enjoying the person who I'm becoming, all the learnings that I'm getting, all the frustrations, mm. all the haters. Everything is in between, right? It's mm. like, I just like, look at this. Like, we are moving. We are doing something. So, it's enjoying the now. Yes, keep chasing, but enjoy the journey. That's mm. my perception. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I do. 
Um, I mean, I like to play <laughs> devil's advocate a little bit because, you know, especially with those feelings of being satisfied or, or, you know, looking for happiness. I talk about this a lot with different people, in different contexts. Um, but yeah, I think like at some point you just need to decide that to be happy. Like I said before, yes. but I do agree with you. Yes. You're right. Like you need something to, to look forward to in life. You do. You have to have a reason for wanting to see the future, you know, to get out of bed, to, to see what the future has in store for you tomorrow. Yes. Um, and some people would call that like your purpose in life. And I think maybe that's what kind of I keep coming back to with this. You know, you talk about, it, you know, the voice and all that, by the way, I'm sick at the moment. And I'm sure people can hear that. Um, and you talk about the guests and you talk about all the good things that I've got going on um, and what the possibilities are. And thank you. I love that. It's so great hearing you say it. <laughs> but, you know, like, but, like, what is it for me? What keeps me grounded doing this? What keeps me enjoying it, even though it's tiny? I've got a small but, like, beautiful audience of people that I really connect to. Um, I love all my guests. I text them from time to time, months after we've recorded to say, you know, ask them how they're going um, and stay in touch. Um, what what keeps me grounded is like telling stories. I feel like my purpose in life is to tell stories, to be a great storyteller or a teller of great stories. And so, you know, it can be on a rainy day. It could be on a, on a beautiful sunny day. It could be any day. And I'm, I feel like I'm living my purpose and that keeps me going. Not so much looking at going, oh man, I want to hit some Joe Rogan numbers one day with this podcast. No, you know, whatever happens, happens. But the purpose keeps me grounded and it keeps me going. And, you know, that's one thing that has changed throughout my life from maybe who I was 10 years ago to who I am now is that maybe knowing that back then I didn't have a purpose and now I do, you know, and if you have a purpose, it can sustain you throughout anything. Yes, it makes sense and it's beautiful and it's beautiful. And more than that is like listening to your purpose. Um, you love to tell stories and you are bringing other people to tell their stories too. You know, you are bringing other people to like really squeeze their stories as in you are helping them out to get people know their stories. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I love what you're doing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I love it. It's so much fun. Hey, where are you at the moment? Um, like just for the, our audience's sake, um, there's a few dogs barking. Well, yeah, no. So I'm staying in a very local community. I will try. I know that if they like they are listening, they cannot see, but I will show you uh, that I have. So this is one side. There is okay. one temple, yeah, right? Wow. And then if I go to the other side, you will see another temple. So it's a very local community. In Kathmandu, there is this neighborhood called Tamel, where most people go. So Tamel is really touristic. You can find a lot of like Western kind of restaurants and cafes. And I, I usually go to Tamel to work from some coffee shops there because the area that I'm in now is called Old Patan. And in Old Patan is the local people, period. And I love it. Like I have like this... Uh, on my balcony, like I sit here to, to, to have breakfast, and then in this window, mm -hmm. there is um, a kid, 12 years old kid. And then when I'm having lunch, I sit and then I start talking about how his college was, mm -hmm. you know, and then I go lunch and then I sit down with the lady who was washing clothes and then we start talking about her family. And then someone meets me and then they invite me to get dinner with their family in their house. Like I'm really surround like very the the locals um, and I love it, but yeah, but the locals live like this, like many many people, kids, family, dogs. So that's why you're hearing <laughs> the dogs barking. Yeah, yeah, and um, for those who are just listening, Lucy was just showing us around the apartment where she's living at the moment, and it's like it's a beautiful looking location with lots of temples. I wanted to ask you though, Lucy, if you're still counting. How many countries have you visited now? I still count. There's a lot of discussions about counts, counting countries as well. I do like to count my countries because I want to visit them all. 
So, but it's not a race. So I am doing, like now Nepal is my country number 65. Number 66 if I count Brazil, because I never counted Brazil, but I should, right? So then it would be number 66. But normally every year I travel to 12 or 14 countries. And then from those, I do new like three or four only, mm. uh, because I come back a, a lot to countries that I love. Mm. Yes. And so, like, talk to me a bit, a little bit about that then. Like, what, like, what are the countries that you love and why? Oh, this is so hard. I always mention to people to ask me about, like, so, like, the one that I love more about food is Thailand. The one that I love more about nature, as in, like, ocean nature is Philippines. The one that I love the most for mountains is Switzerland. The one that I love most for culture, real, like real culture that you can feel, like the culture of the country was Myanmar. Uh, the one that I feel more zen is India. Uh, so the one that's like more, have more digital nomad community and then you have friends from everywhere. Like you can go to uh, Bali, Indonesia or in Portugal. So it really depends from like what is it because honestly I love all the countries all the countries that I go to I'm like I'm going to stay here forever and mm. then I move the country I'm like I'm going to stay here forever and uh, I just love them all like honestly it's mm. like they have their different things like here in Nepal it's a very poor country there is not really much infrastructure but you just feel the love of people mm. right they are just so genuine and it's like it's a simple life so Yes, I love them all. It's so hard. Yeah, you know, just listening to the way you talk, it, you're not like, and I know that, that you said that there's debate around counting countries. I'm not someone yes. that is a, is like a big fan of counting countries um, just because I lose count at like five. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, it takes me a little while to, I have to get my fingers out to start counting. Um, because for me, it's all about like a connection with a place more than a box to tick. And I was talking to Marta about this in episode nine and she's like, I'm a box ticker. And I'm like, well, if that's what you, if that's how you get by in life, then great. That's good for you. You know, like the way, whatever way you want to live is like, you do that. Like what, do what makes you happy, you know? And if it's counting countries and ticking boxes, well, awesome. But listening to the way that you talk, yeah, you're, you're counting countries but you clearly have a connection, some kind of connection with every place. You don't go there just to tick a box and to make up numbers in some kind of weird um, egotistical race or diary that you're keeping. You can talk about any place and every place with some kind of connection that you feel in your heart to it. Even just before when you were showing us around the apartment talking about the 12 year old that you talk to outside the window, you know, like that's not sexy stuff. That's not why people go traveling, but your attitude towards moving around really is special. It's different because I can't like, I don't know if I've ever met anyone. Well, I, I haven't, I've never met anyone who can be so experienced and have visited so many different locations and still see like the beautiful tiny little um you know micro connections that you can have and micro interactions that you can have with people and and to still have the energy to not only keep doing those but to mm -hmm. keep you know have those filling your own cup if that makes sense that's special like yeah no no it does it does and i love that you bring that up because for me as i said like i love to like go and explore new things you know and what brings the uniqueness of the countries are really the people and one thing that i learned too is like is to be curious so a lot of people comes a lot of with like judgments right so it's like i was just in oman before here and then it's a muslim country and then look i have to go always covering my knees and covering my shoulders not that i could not but like i know that this is their culture and i'm inside their country so i have to be respectful right and then uh, there was this beautiful tour that I did in a mosque where like there was volunteers, women, um, Muslims, like really to talk about the Muslim. And instead of me trying to like change their mind about like, why do you accept your husband with have another wife? No, just, just embrace with curiosity, you know, like when you go to a place and then you ask people questions on why do you think this way? Why, why is that okay for you, blah, blah, blah? And like, what perspective do you have? So then you see um, 
like in every single country, they have their own uniqueness in culture and thought process. And that's what I really love to connect and discover. And this will always be new in the countries that I go to. I repeat a lot of countries to check like new areas and see like the beauty of it. But for sure, every country that I want to, like I want to listen to the perspective of the people who lives there. You know, like what are their perceptions of the world and the way they live? Is it good or not? And here in Nepal, it's so funny for me because I'm finding, number one, surprisingly that a lot of people travel a lot. Like you see, like you think that they are super like, you meal, they are not, tra no, they all traveling a lot the world and they all tell me that Nepal is where they want to be living forever. Mm -hmm. You know, like they visit like Europe, they visit Australia, they, they visit like first world countries and they're like, but Nepal is where I want to live. Like Nepal is where is my people, is like is the smiles, is the taste, mm -hmm. you know, and I love that and I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I love your approach that um, you know, open-minded, curious approach that you bring, because I think it's, it's one of the things that I'm actually trying to, you know, achieve with the podcast in a way is to get people out of their bubbles and listening to other people's stories and perspectives. And, you know, thankfully so far I've had such great listeners and, and people who are um, super open-minded and uh, that get to listen to all of these different stories and perspectives without judgment. And I think you're right. Like when you say that you could go somewhere and you could go there with your own agenda or with your own thoughts and political views and, you know, start talking to people about that. But I just feel like that's so wrong. It's so wrong and so disrespectful for people to question other people's cultures. There's a reason why certain things are a certain way and in western culture there are a lot of issues you know there's a lot of really great things about being in a first world western country but there's also a lot of problems that some of these other countries don't have for certain reasons as well so yeah i do love that you go with such an open mind and such an open heart and again you know i talked a little bit earlier about like how courageous you are i think a couple of weeks ago you sent me a message to ask me like what's one attribute yes. that you have that you know just name one attribute of yours that sort of is the most standout attribute i can't remember what i said what did i say ah uh, you said i think about the, the determination i think so many so yeah i think it was determination it was a very short one yeah like your undying enthusiasm or determination yes. or something like that i think that is one of the things that i really love about you is that you know when i look at you and the way that you live and the things that you've achieved and the way that you refuse to settle it all sort of stems from a curiosity that you have a curiosity to, to find out more, to learn more, to see more, to experience more. And when you inherently approach life through a curious lens, your ego doesn't exist. It, it's dropped. Your political ideas don't have space because curiosity requires so much openness and that openness needs to be there to allow for opportunities for things to come in and not for things to be projected out of you. Does that make sense? 100%, 100%. But one thing that I want to add there, because look, I did, um, uh, I speaking for like a company in Brazil, a kind of like motivation, activation and speeching, like talking my story and all. And the feedback that I received from people were like, oh, but you are always just so successful. Just like nothing happened to you. And like, I just want to add like what you said, that's indeed like what I received from a lot of people, like my courage, like the ego, the ego drops and like putting myself out there. But I want to say, I'm fucking scared doing those things. And I want, I want to add this to people. It's like, I am doing, but I'm fucking scared. I don't like all the time that I did it. I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I wasn't certain of what I, do, what I was doing. I'm not certain now or, or what I am I doing, you know, like, but I'm, I'm putting myself out there because it's just trying that doors will open for me. That's my perspective. So I really want to add that to people because people, I feel, if you like tell a lot of stories like, ah, yeah, yeah high achievers, yeah, no courage, yeah, you go and do. People don't relate. And I just want to say like, look, I'm scared too. Like fear is a part of the process, you know? And I just start like embracing it and knowing that like this will be the feeling that I'm having, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to push forward. So 
Yes. You know, I, I do really love that. And um, you did post something on social media, I think on Instagram the other day, uh, about this fear or these um, yes. fears that you have. And I've got to admit, it was the first time that I've seen you open up about any kind of fears or being, you know, vulnerable in that kind of way. And not because I think that you're the sort of person that only likes to show people the highlight reel. No, you've always been authentic from my point of view. But yeah, I've, I was pleasantly surprised. Let's just put it that way. And, and I was really pleased to see you talk about fear. And I'm really glad that you've actually brought it up now because like fear has been a big part of my life. It's been a part of my life that's absolutely crippled me and I know that you said before that like I'm a go-getter and I just achieve things and I do stuff but I do stuff that I feel is safe for me to do and I really struggle with the stuff that for some reason there's this fear that sort of just looms over me and so what like mm -hmm. what is it about you like what is it about you that seems to be able to push through the fear consistently and continuously yes yeah, so honestly, I have my own technique, which is also like will sound kind of cliche, but it's look, it's what I do. Honestly, it is what I do. And, um, and I invite everyone to do it. It's literally put on the paper as in like, what is the worst that can happen? You know, like, like when you are doing something new, what is the worst that can happen? And then you're going to see that the worst that can happen is not really that bad, you know? So like for me, uh, there is a lot in all of us. There is a lot of like the judgment of other people and other people, what other people would think. But I'm telling you what, if you knew how much other people think about your life, they are thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about you. You would live more, right? You would live more like what you want to do in your life, honestly. And like, so besides for that, which like sells apart, is really like right now was like, what's the worst that can happen? So for me, when I was, okay, let's take this last movement from Australia to Digital Nomad, that, that I got like the residency card, like going on, like this high paid salary, blah, blah, blah. Like, look, if it doesn't work out, my boss in Australia loves me. He would receive me again. I just have to go back to the same work. What is the bet on that? You know, like nowadays, like, okay, I'm quitting my job. And then what? Even if my boss doesn't want me, I know so much. I can find another job in two seconds. Mm. Now, what is the worst thing that can happen? Is it like really that scary? You know, so, and, and then it's like, it's kind of like you're gambling with your life as in like, look at the upside, how much it can be, right? Like who you can become, what you can achieve, like all the, the things that you want to live and, and present in your life. Look, and look at the bed. The bed is you coming back to where, to where you are right now. So like when you put the thought like in this way, then you always have this frame, okay, okay, let's move forward. And look, it doesn't mean that it's like it's one time it won't go back to your mind, right? Like because it's our minds that we want to be in the comfort zone all the time. This happens to us. But it's really like knowing this exercise and like, no, I can do this, you know, and empower your own self. And you have to empower your own self. There won't be nobody like, you know, just pushing you towards like you have to do it in your own, your own, you know, like nobody comes to save you. It's the, the cliche sentence that's so true. Nobody's coming to save you. You have to do it. Sure. Okay. So I asked myself a question, like what's the worst thing that yes. could happen? Let's just say yes. I want to quit my job and do podcasting full time. And I think, oh shit, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, um, my podcast doesn't take off. Um, I run out of money. I can't pay my bills. I can't pay my rent. I get evicted. Um, I have to sell my podcasting equipment. You know, I, I'm just... Let me, okay, let me grab the thought. Let me grab the thought. And now I want to ask you, what if everything goes right? Can you tell me what's happening if everything goes right? Yeah, I can't because that's, I think that's one of the things about a, a fear based mindset is that when you and and i think people become addicted to this and i think i have in my in my life at times been addicted to fear you know it's like a drug mm -hmm. that just sort of drives you and keeps you in this terrible place in your life and i mean what i'm trying to do is is i'm trying to level with all the people out there that are listening to you and thinking but 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 you know it's so easy for her and i'm just trying to like play devil's advocate here a little bit and go into you know, one of the mindsets that I've had where I've been at my complete worst and, and I feel like that's what it's been. It's been looking at only the worst case scenarios and I'm telling you, 
I don't even think, I don't even have one thought for like what's the good things that could happen. Not even one. And that's scary. Like, I, I think you've just... So that's the first thing that you need to do is really like taking the time and putting right down a paper. What things will look like if everything goes right. Yes. And you know, it's like, it's... Uh, um, yes. That's it's so your, your brain, your brain don't know what's reality or what's not. If you are focusing on what things that's going to go wrong, things going to go wrong. Mm. You need to focus on things that's going to go right. And if you don't know even... What does it mean? How you know when you get there? Having a clear vision on what you want to achieve is extremely important. I just started the podcast. We start talking about like the work that we have done one year ago. Mm. And it's like, it's ticking the boxes, isn't mm. it? It's the power of writing down. It's the power of intention. It's the power of knowing. It's the power of the positive. I want the next time that I talk to you, my friend, I want to ask the question, what everything goes right, how this looks like. Yeah, you know, I do shoot from the hip a lot in my life. I tend to, to take action before, you know, having the grand visions because I'm an action person. I love doing things. You are? <laughs> I just love it. You really are. Um, <laughs> And I don't want anyone out there to, to feel like concerned for me or anything like that. I was just, like I said, trying to play devil's advocate a little bit to some of, for some of our audience, some of our listeners, some that we know yes. really well, some that we don't know at all, people that are going to listen to this in the future um, that can't seem to break out of that fear cycle. And I feel like I, for me personally, in my own experience, that's what it is, is that I've never started with that from that point of like, okay, what's the most awesome end result going to look like? No, I get into action and then suddenly I start moving and then suddenly all I see is, see is like the worst case scenario. <laughs> and I'm like, it's so silly when you just spell it out like that. Like, hang on, why didn't I just stop for a second and think about like, what would be the most best case scenario? What would that look like? It doesn't even take long. Yes. Like I'm thinking about it right now and it's like, yeah, that's cool. I like that scenario. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. And what is, and, yeah. And what is the feeling? What is the feeling in your body when you think about like what's amazing that can happen? Um, well, one of the first feelings is I get a bit dreamy. You know, it, it's like this dreaminess, <laughs> I guess you could say. Yeah. And then the next feeling that I have is like, huh, can that really happen for me? It's like a question. Yes. Yeah. So that's the trap that we all go into right like i'm not saying that i have this question in my head many many times but then i choose to sweet that's like thought and say i can do it yes that is it for it is for me like honestly i you see and it's funny because i have been studying all this spiritual stuff and manifestation stuff and coaching stuff just really like three years past three years not longer than that mm. and i did achieve like what people would call success even before but I just look back and I see that without knowing subconsciously, I was already applying that in my life. So gratitude is like one that I always have been grateful for every, everything that happened to my life. Everything, everything. Like it's like when I broke a car that I have to pay a whole full insurance, 1,500 euros, I didn't have money. It was like, ah, it was like, okay, fine. What, what is the life like trying to teach me here? You know, so it's like being grateful for like everything and the power of being positive. Mm -hmm. The thoughts will come. The sabotage thoughts will come. The fear will come. The what if I can, if I cannot, like what if it will come. But it's being aware with this voice in your head. And really there's an exercise that I have been doing that is giving you space for this voice to talk to you. So it's like you stop and it was like, okay, voice, what do you want to tell me? And having really internal conversation as in like, is this person who is saying bad? And then put another person in front of that, like the person that wrote like, what's everything is going to go good? And then let them discuss, but I'm doing for this. Can you like in making peace with the two voices as well? It's one very powerful exercise. And this will always bring you more awareness. As soon as you are aware, oops, I'm in these thoughts again. 
like how can i do it to change it let me go back here to my affirmation let me go back here to like my my vision right it's like it's all powerful exercises being aware is the first thing for sure yes yes i love it i love what you're saying everything um but i think it's really interesting that you just said then about allowing space or knowing that the that those negative thoughts are going to come i think that's another one of the traps is that sometimes i'm so forgetful that i'll start something and i completely forget that the negative thoughts are going to come because i'm i'm inspired right now and yes. <laughs> like when i'm inspired like the like the negative thoughts don't exist and then suddenly they start coming and i'm like oh shit where are these coming from and i think i, lo I love what you just said about remembering or knowing that they're going to come preparing yourself for them to come and have those mitigating strategies around okay when that negative self talk starts as it always does and it will and it does yes. no yes. matter who you are and what stage of your life or career you're at what are you going to do what's the action that you're going to take i think that's a really great exercise to have to like to yes. build into your everyday life routine yes and of course there's the gratitude as well which is great i mean people talk about gratitude a lot but gratitude is an interesting one because i don't necessarily think and i, I like i love gratitude practice um, but it needs to be genuine and i know there's a lot of yes. people that go i'm grateful for this and i'm grateful for that and they're just doing it it's a chore and they don't feel like you know gratitude for something they're just saying it someone told them that they should just be great grateful and say grateful things no like you have to feel it but mm -hmm. i think gratitude isn't necessarily something that helps when you have these negative thoughts i think there needs to be that other strategy that directly focuses around what am i going to do when i have negative self-talk and i think your like positive self-talk strategy is a good one i just don't think gratitude yeah, is it but yeah, no, but just, but just a minute, like connecting with this, like a gratitude thing, there are two sides of it. For sure, it needs to be a feeling and it needs to be coming from the heart. But at the same time, like I connect one, you say, like the people say, like from, from the mouth out, but this also have power because even if you're not feeling it and if you are repeating it at a certain point, if you keep doing it, this will be your feeling too. So it's like, it's, a, it's kind of a training process that you can do. And when you connect, the, I haven't thought about this, but like now you just said, I'm like, you can be grateful for the negative thoughts when they come. And then you tell like, look, and I have been doing this for transform from transforming my body at this moment right now too. Like I look at my, like, this is going to be insane, but like, honestly, I look at my fat, right? in my arm and I look at it and I say, thank you for being here. Thank you for protecting me all this time, but I'm allowing you to transform. This is not coming from my heart, like at this moment, it's at this point, like it's literally an exercise that I learned a week ago and I'm doing it and more and more it's coming, like for my legs are coming and it's the same like with the negative thoughts that you come, it's like, thank you, I know that all you are doing is trying to keep me safe, but I choose to make an, a positive like thinking instead. So you just say like, for you know, you so you are being great, to, it's because everything that happened to you, everything that's happened to your mind is also for your own good at cert as at certain point your conscious level wants to protect you so just say thank you thank you for trying to protect me but now i'm choosing not to have this thought i'm choosing not to have fear i choose like to say to myself that i can do it and this is an internal dialogue you know that you bring di uh, gratitude into it too i hope it's not too much um zen like stuff but uh, i'm like being super honest and transparent with you that's like my beliefs base at this moment like I, I totally think that's like if we do bring gratitude for everything it, it does help like it's my in my perception no no it's, it's certainly not too much zen stuff i love having these discussions and i, I think <laughs> like one of the things that i i just realized that i love about you is that by the way how old are you now 38 oh we're the same I, age a super young lady super yeah. young lady yeah we're the same age and one of the things that I realized that I really love about you just now is that you're constantly discovering. You're just like continuously discovering. And yeah, it's both. It's like the outside world and the inside world. Your internal world as well is just as important for you in your life of discovery as, you know, the next country that you're going to visit. 
like I just think that's so fascinating and it's so rare to find in someone that's just like <clears throat> you know 38 which is considered we're getting middle age you know technically by a lot of people's standards and I'm like what is it that I love like what is it about Lucy that I just like I just can't stop talking to you what is like you're just radiating off the screen why am I so hooked on like your energy and why do I love having these discussions with you so much? And I'm like, that's what it is. Because Lucy never feels like she has 100% of the answers. She approaches something. And sorry, I'm talking about you in third person, but I'm just like talking about you like as the way I'm thinking. And like she, she approaches something and sometimes she's certain about what she knows at the moment, but also knows that what she knows at the moment might not be everything. Like you're continuously discovering, you're continuously learning and the way that you approach life is a way in which you know there's still things to discover and learn and the possibilities are still there and you could be wrong but you've gotten this far and like now I feel this way and I think that's really like when, when it comes to the people that I love the most in life and the people that I really kind of struggle to connect to. Um, that's the key difference. The key difference is that the people that I really love the most are the ones that are still believe that there's possibilities for discovery of the thing in life that's going to propel them to their next stage. And they don't settle. They're not settling for, you know, whatever it is they have now. There. That was a long spiel. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Wow. That was uh, beautiful. <laughs> appreciate my friend really do no i mean i just i just just the way that your face lit up when i said what i said and then you were like oh yeah it's like that's not common you know for someone to be like that mm -hmm. and you know when you told me that you were getting into coaching i was like wow cool okay well that's a that's a very saturated market I guess you could say, well, like everything. So is being an influencer or a podcaster or, or a photographer or something. Um, they're all saturated. All markets are saturated at the moment, let's face it. But I think like one of your strengths is that you don't go into a process 100% certain that you have all of the tricks in your bag. You're willing to learn as you go. And I think that's just so beautiful. It's so rare. I just love it. Did I just repeat myself? I probably did. <laughs> No, thank you. No, that's, that, that's it. It's like uh, we, we won't ever feel ready. We will feel ready along the way, right? And it's, uh, I think it's not only about me, like it look at you again, you know, it's, uh, we feel ready along the way. And along the way, we learn more, we know how to improve, we know how to get better, you know how to, to serve better. So it's, it's doing. Everything is like, uh, it, it happens if you take action. It's like, uh, it is very important to write down everything. It's important to know what you want. It's important to like have the positive things, but you have to action. Action upon it, it's, it's, you have to, you have to. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want to change up the pace of the conversation a little bit. I'm going to go back to the story that you told at the beginning around breaking your nose. I'm going to now sort I... of tell it from my perspective. Now, I had told Lucy not to buy her own skateboard again. Um, because I didn't feel like she was ready, but God bless you. You just, you know, you're so tenacious and determined and there's nothing that anyone can do to stop you from achieving or doing what you've already got set in your mind. Bless you. And so you went and bought your own board. I found you on the beach skating one day and decided to join you. Now you had fallen off your board maybe a few days earlier and your arm really hurt. I think it was maybe your left arm was really hurting. You hadn't had it checked out or anything like that. And then we're skating along the beach. I stopped to get ice cream for us. And suddenly I look over about five seconds later and, and you're on the ground and there seems to be a crowd gathered around you. Anyway, the girl at the ice cream stand is like, sir, like what flavors do you want? And I'm looking at her going, hmm, should I get caramel or salted caramel? Like, what's the difference? And like, I'm looking over and more and more people are just gathering around you. And I'm, I'm having a really hard time choosing like which flavors of ice cream I, I want. And I'm like, no, she's fine. She's just falling on her ass. Eventually, I, I'm walking over to you with my two skateboards that I had with me on the beach that day. Two ice creams. It was a hot night, so they're both melting in my hands. I finally get to you. <laughs> And you are on the ground and there's a lot of blood everywhere. I take you 
to get yourself cleaned up. Not only have you broken your nose from falling flat on your face, you've sliced the top of it open and there's blood coming out from the wound as well. So there's a lot of blood, at which point I'm thinking I'm going to have to discard these ice creams that I just took five minutes trying to order. So I've ditched the ice creams, taken you to the bathroom, cleaned you up, taken you back to your apartment. Now you're complaining that your other arm is sore. Anyway... Long story short, and this has been a long story, apologies everyone, is that you eventually went to the doctor and got x-rayed and both of your arms were fractured and your nose and you had a big cut on your nose that needed stitches? Yes, it did. I still have this cut. <laughs> Can you imagine how bad I felt? Like I was, I was the one who, I guess, was introducing you to skateboarding and I think you were on a FaceTime call with your mum back in Brazil and she was like, what are you doing to my daughter? <sighs> But yeah, yes, so yes. for everyone at home, that was the calamity that was um, six years ago when we met and how we sort of, <laughs> that's a great way to forge a friendship though, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a great story, dude. It's like I still have this scarf on my nose. I tell everybody this story. Zero, zero fault at all. Like, like really? Like how, how, how would possibly be your fault? I was doing everything that you, like you said for me to not to do. Yeah, I said, whatever you do, don't go slow. But I mean, I want to go back to last year because, yes, I was traveling around Europe and you're one of the first people I've thought of. I was like, Lucy, I need to reach out to Lucy. I haven't spoken to her in ages. Um, There was some kind of post that you put up online, I think it was on Facebook, to reach out to people who you know wanted to quit their jobs and, and travel around the world and work. And if you wanted to learn more, to just send you a message. So I sent you a message and was like, hey, Lucy, just saw your post. I mean, super interesting. And so you and I were doing work. And like you said earlier, I was foc- I was really focused on blogging at the time, like writing. And did did I mention the podcast at all? Uh, you did mention once in one of our sessions that you have done it. But like you really mentioned to me before you started, like about three months ago, because we still sit chat, right? Like every two, three months. And you did mention, look, there is this podcast that I did in the past, and I, I think I want to try to to survive it. And then you said that, and after a week, my friend, then you like it was boom, 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 boom. No, stop. Yeah, yeah. Because can I tell you, I, I met this guy in Italy who was studying human design. Yes. Yes. And he's just, so do you know, that for anyone back home, if you don't know human design, just look it up, and it's mind-blowing. Um, but you know a little bit about human design, right? I do. I do. I have my reading like a few months ago. <laughs> really? What are, what are you? A uh, manifesting generator. Oh, me too. Me too. Yes. There yeah. we go. High five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and look, there's no right or wrong or better design to be for those that don't know anything about it. And one of the one of the things that I learned about you know, being a manifesting generator and, and being satisfied or like your strategy being, you know, to, to find satisfaction was that while I was blogging, I was enjoying the intellectual process of writing, but I wasn't like feeling yes, like yes, yes. Like I do when I have these conversations and it was thanks to human design for helping me realize that, that it was, wow. it wasn't blogging. It was the podcast, the podcast from having written a children's book and, and, you know, doing things with that from having, giving people skateboarding lessons and and making people smile and like happy that they can skateboard now, which is something they've always wanted to do to doing the podcast. This is the thing that I felt gave me the most satisfaction because it wasn't all about giving. I felt like it's a two way street. It's a fair exchange, these conversations. Um, and so it just was a no brainer. And so when you see if that I'm doing here and like achieving, as you put it and like, bam, boom, boom, um, Mm -hmm. I'm just like living the human design strategy that I felt like I discovered. And that was only back in August and that was what, eight months ago or something like that. So yeah, if you you haven't looked up human design yet, do so because I felt like there was one thing missing for me and it was just that little last bit of clarity and even though like you were helping me get there through our coaching sessions, I was like, maybe I was complicating it or something. And when I learned about human design, it was like, yes, that's what it is. All you need to do is do the thing that makes you feel most satisfied. Well, that's easy. But you see, actually, actually, like this point of like finding your true yes, 
right? It's not an easy path. It's not an easy path. So it's like, be grateful that you found this, like, yes. Because like the, if they, if the most funny thing, if you ask people like, what do you want really in your life? People will be like, oh, yeah, oh, I don't know. It's like, it's hard to, because we, we live in this mode of society that tells us what we should want and do and be, mm. uh, that we forget who we really are and what we love, right? Mm. So it's like finding this, yes, is like, it's an achievement on itself. I'm very glad that to hear that you use the human design for, like, I think also like super powerful. Everybody mm. should like look into it. But then again, you are an action taker and you were taking actions. You were experimenting before yeah. other things that maybe, maybe did help you to just analyze, oh, this is what I don't like. Right. And then you, you test it out. So testing your things, that's the path. Yeah, that's true. I've always been someone that tested. And I think one of the other things I realized recently is that it's a lonely path to try and live your dream or make something that's not part of the mainstream normal way of of living as like you just suggested um yeah. to make that a reality for your life one of the things that i felt recently is that unfortunately there's not a lot of people that are going to want to see you succeed there's oh a... 100% there won't be people that want to see you succeed and you need to know that this will happen too it's like the thing that we said the haters going to hate you know what i mean and then another thing it's more like Look at those people with the love eyes, I, I, I used to say. Mm. Look at those people with the love eyes because whatever art they putting onto you is because they are putting on themselves, mm. right? It's a reflection. So like they are, they are judging you because mostly it's because they don't have the courage to do the same. And they feel bad about it on the subconscious level and then they attack you. Mm. So it's like receiving attack and knowing, knowing that your group of people will be different, mm. right? right? Like it will differ. Knowing that, because this will happen. It's part of the transformation that who you are becoming, you are pushing forward. Like many people just want to be in the comfort zone. So it's the same thing as the negative thoughts. The negative thoughts will come, the fear will come, the people judging you, they will be there. Mm. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that surprised me the most is that even some of your oldest friends will be the most quiet through these times when you're feeling like you're starting to achieve and really you yes. know, live your purpose. It's kind of one of the things that really shocked me the most. Maybe I'm naive and I thought, you know, friends should be there for life or something like that. But no, I, I actually, I realized that mm, there's not a lot of people that will want to actually see you do well and succeed the way that you've, like the way that you want. And that's it's just something else I wanted to add. And thank you for also pointing that out because I think it's one of the things that if you're being brave and making big moves in your life that you should prepare yourself for, like you said. So, yes. But then another beautiful thing to think about is like if you're doing it, there's other people doing it. And when and then you just find this tribe, yeah. right? That like supports yes. and embraces each other. Yes. And we are all in like I want to have you in my group, right? Like we are both like oh, yeah. evolving. I want to have you in my group forever. Oh, right. So it's that. like it's the type of like yeah, so it's the the type of like choices that we make. It's like who are empowering us, who are like saying yes, push forward, go, continue. Like that's the people that we need to surround ourselves with. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we kind of lost touch there for a while. I think I let a couple of years pass without sort of even reaching out or saying hi. I always felt like I was connected with, to you through like Facebook. You're always posting about being in some other amazing country or whatever. Yeah. But one of the, the things that I just really love about our friendship is that the time passed, but now we've just kind of found this really amazing reason to reconnect. And like yes. the connection is so strong, you know, we're on that sort of same page that it feels like there's so much purpose behind this friendship now. Does that make For sense? Sure. Like genuine, yes. Yes. Um, genuine. reciprocated purpose. Um, yes. So yeah, I want to thank you for the influence that you've had in my life recently. Yeah. You really came back in at the right time. You know, and I know I reached out to and you. And you but... came for me at the right time too. You see, that's the beauty of the universe. It does, does connect the dots. In both sides, you did came to me in the right time too. Like I could not ask for a better coach, you know, like in the journey that I was doing, like my certification, I couldn't ask for a better one. You like fit like as a glove and I'm so grateful. It's uh, and it's still, it's, and it's still a learning process. Like our conversation is still a learning process for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and we could talk for forever and we're probably going to talk yes. again because like you said that you've got a, a book that you're writing at the moment. It's a memoir. You're thinking how long, yes. how much longer? 
I must finish so I gain uh, I gain a sponsorship for a, a public a publishing book company. Uh, so I must give in their hands until end of June, and then there is more three months for them to launch. So July, August, September, yeah, by October this year, um, I'm putting my my book out there. Okay, well let's. I don't know the name yet. Don't ask me the name, but <laughs> it will come. You'll figure it out. I have figured it out. I always name these podcast episodes after listening to it through the edit. Someone says something really beautiful or there's one line that they say that just like really resonates with me and I name the episodes mm. after that one key thing that they said. Um, nice. Very good. But, okay. So we're going to need to pencil in another catch up at least, you know, right before you publish. Yes. But for now, I just want to sort of like do something that I normally do with all other guests and that is, you know, to ask you, you know, for someone that is thinking about making a, a big major change in their life and I know that you've given heaps of amazing advice already for anyone that's still listening but what's one key critical piece of advice that you might give to someone that's thinking to take a big step yeah it, look it's and again I, I, I'm fearful to be too much zen here but it's totally in my core belief that you are fully supported by the universe like in whatever it is that you do you are fully supported believe that you are and believe that you can and things will unfold for you. It's just, just, just trust the process. Trust the process. That would be the message. Mm, yeah, I love it. I love talking to you. Like I said, we could go on forever. Why does it have to end? I always feel sad when our phone calls end and I'm off in the world. I feel like on my own again. But I'm super impressed with your progress. And thank you for being part of mine as well. And yeah, just want to thank our listeners for for taking us this far yes thanks everyone thanks louis you're the best oh my god that was awesome awesome hey there listener we'd love to know what you thought of that episode of the louis diaz podcast you can find us on instagram facebook youtube and even tiktok to let us know and be sure to follow subscribe and leave us a review on spotify where you can catch some of our other really great episodes thanks for listening and catch you next time